<laughs> Yo, here's, here's something I, I want to get your opinion on. It. Um, Melly Mel, I'm not sure if you see, but he's been very vocal. He just did a, a, a series of interviews out there. And um, he was like, yo, Eminem is overrated. Um, on that particular list, the Billboard list, Eminem is number five, made top five. And he's like, the only reason he made top five is because he's a white rapper. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, it's nonsense. I mean, it, it's total utter nonsense. He also said something other, something to the fact that he doesn't hear blank in the club. Like there was an artist, he was like, I don't hear that artist in the club. I'm like, Mel, when was the last time you were in a club? I don't see you in a club. Like I'd be in Miami, I'd be out. You know, I don't, I don't ever see you out. Like, where are you? I just feel like Mel as an ancestor, as an architect, deserves to be heard. But I don't know if I'm in a position to criticize how he feels. Like, I, I just, I think at this point in my life, because I'm also on the back nine, I, I don't know if I'm even in a place to criticize how he feels. I think every grown man, especially men like Mel, who paved the way, they're entitled to their opinion. I don't, I don't need to counter it. I don't need to question it. The only thing I want to question is when he says things like, I don't hear records in the club. Like, bro, when are you in the club? <laughs> like, if you don't think he's top because he's white, that you're, you're entitled to your opinion. That's fine. Like, I'm, that's fine. Eminem's not in my top five. He's in my top 10, but he's not in my top five. But that's my top five. I still love Marshall. I still love Paul. I still love everyone in that camp. I just don't think he's top five. But that's not an opinion. That's just my opinion. Hold on, so search, search. Michael Barron doesn't believe Eminem belongs in the top five? No, I didn't say that. I said he's not in my top five. Okay, that's that's what I'm asking, in your top five. But you're saying does he that deserve right? to be in my top five? It's not about deserve or not deserve. But he, okay, I, I'm, I'm clear. Okay, so let me watch my words. No, 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 it's fine. I understand what you're saying. He Isn't is not a, in, a, a, you as a hip hop fan, as an artist, he is not in your top five. Correct, he's in my top 10, but he's not in my top five. Rakim, Chuck D, KRS, Nas, Black Thought. And then- You know, it's crazy. And then it's J, and then it's J G Rap, Kane, M, Scarface. Hold on. Where the hell's Notorious B.I.G.? He's not even in my top 30. Okay, we're going to switch topics. <laughs> like, there's no way I can I, I can continue that part of the conversation. All right, uh, yo, we talked about Melly Mel. We talked about Melly Mel, your man academics, who is really a voice for, for this new era of hip hop enthusiast, listener. Mm -hmm. um, he said, old school rappers look dusty. So. <laughs> Yo, know, I was actually surprised because you waited until after an onslaught of, uh, you know, hip hop icons came out and spoke their piece and their thoughts. What made you decide, I, I just need to get my opinion out here and, and, and really just share my thoughts on what this young man just said? You know, it was, well, it was three things. One is, you know, my involvement in Complex with Rich Antonello and Mark gave academics his platform to become who he is, right? Everyday struggle. Mm -hmm. So that was A. And I've seen him grow and I've seen his star rise and uh, I'm really, really happy for him. I think he has done a really good job. Has he made some mistakes? Absolutely. Has he got caught up in his ego? Absolutely. But who of us haven't uh, as artists, as entertainers, who of us haven't uh, gotten in that place um, you know, early in our in our life, let's say. B, 
I really felt it was important to watch Russell, to watch the other people that came before me make a comment. But the main reason I made a comment was because I was in Jersey and I got the privilege to meet academics manager and we were at dinner. Uh, it was me, him, uh, an artist he was representing that we were interested in signing, my business partner and another a young man that was there. And uh, we started talking about it. And I was wearing a Patek Philippe 5411 Nautilus. Um, which is a nice watch. Very nice, nice watch. watch. This is a nice watch too, but just one of the collection. And uh, we were leaving the dinner table and I said goodbye and I had not mentioned it at all. And as I'm leaving, I said, oh, by the way, tell you man academic, this dusty rapper got a Patek 5411 on his wrist. And his man goes, his manager goes, Ugh really search. I was like, yeah, man, really. And he said to me, he goes, you know, when he said that he wasn't talking about you. And that's why I had to say it. Because he uh. was talking about me. He was talking about all of us. Whether he wants to admit it or not, he was talking about all of us. It's not Coca LaRock's fault that there was no business for Coca LaRock to make brand deals, to have a manager, to go outside of the Bronx, to make more than 250 a show. It's not his fault. It's not DJ Hollywood's fault that he was a pioneer. History proves in every business, every business, pioneers don't eat. It's the people that come second that eat. You and I talked about this, and I'm gonna say it here because I think it's important. You and I are the first generation of the second generation of hip hop. Correct. We, no one's been where we are. No one. My hope is that academic as the first generation of the third or fourth generation is able to eat and have longevity that none of our counterparts before us had. The first generation carried the culture from 1980 to 1990. The second generation carried it from 1991 to today. And they continue to. Now there have been other generations that have changed the music, changed the landscape. But if you look at the second generation and where we are today as a collective, we are very involved in media, press, television, film, docu-series, documentary, publishing, production, curation, execution, festivals, theaters, venues. There's never been this funnel that runs as deep as we run. So we have to protect those guys. We have to, it's our responsibility. So I didn't wanna step on anybody's toes. I damn sure didn't wanna repeat what was already said. I just simply wanted to accent what was being shared and only share it from my perspective, which if you, if you think I'm dusty, bro, come grab one of my 17 watches out my closet. You think I'm dusty, come grab my Audi A8 W12, which is only one of 10 in the world, B. Come drive my shit. Come see my house on the water. So, and it's not about bragging. It's about the fact that because of who we are, of who Sean Prez is, of who I am, of who Sean Combs is, of who Mark Echo is, of who the second generation is, that you can't talk about them in front of us because you've never been where they've been. Right. And I so love the well kid. And I, and I love the kid, man. And I think he's an amazing talent. And I think he has a great audience. I just think that he stepped over a line that he needed to be chin-checked on. No, very well said, very well said. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.